that attended today. They certainly made a big difference. Um, a couple of penalties against the opponent offense. They're at the end of obviously a real big one, made it fourth and 15. They come up with 14 yards at the end. I'm really thankful to them for their support. Uh, certainly always, you always want to win a game, but certainly we have to improve in a lot of different areas. Some bright spots coming out really strong, but then really uh, just not sustaining the momentum that we came out with um, in certain areas of our execution and our discipline. So certainly we've got to continue to improve, but all, all in all, some bright spots with some young guys making a lot of plays, uh, some other guys stepping up in spots where we had injuries. Um, questions, please. Coach, we're going to start with Jerry Allen on the post game show. There we go. I got you. Uh, first of all, congratulations, obviously. Uh, last year, your team had a little trouble with the turnover, turnover ratio, takeaway. I mean, what a, what a start. Forcing five turnovers. Uh, you turned two of those early into touchdowns. Uh, that's a huge key for, in this ball game. Oh, it sure was. You know, we, we knew that uh, they had a really good offense and we were going to find we had to find a way to create possessions for ourselves. Um, but guys, again, we came out explosive, came out and really forced some things to happen that got us the ball back. And then late in the game, some really, really big stops by the defense. Defense was on the field too long in certain spurts. And that's uh, again, we have to be more consistent on offense and hang on to the ball and sustain drives and execute more consistently to make that a reality. Um, but yeah, those, those turnovers were huge. You took control of this ball game and the running game, particularly Lane Verdell was, was special. 84 yards rushing in the fourth quarter, really kind of turned the game back around. Yeah, it's what we are. You know, um, certainly some that as we watch film, we have to realize, you know, what we can do really well and things we have to get better at. That's something that really stood out as a positive. So uh, CJ is a great football player, you know, so is Travis. And, um, you know, found our rhythm a little bit more in the, in the fourth quarter. As you, as you look at some of the outstanding play, I mean, it was it was special to see Justin Flo do what he did. I don't have his numbers in front of me right now, but – and he stepped up in a situation where you lose two keys. Kayvon Thibodeau goes down, Drew Mathis goes down. Uh, to have a young man step up and, and take charge like that. Noah Sewell as well. Yeah, well, the um... – Kay Kayvon's injury certainly was something that, uh, you know, you certainly don't ever want to see for anybody, but, you know, it uh, it, can, it hurts us considerably playing on the edge. Uh, Drew Mathis has been a great player. You know, Justin had missed some time about a week and a half ago due to getting nicked up in camp, so he was just getting his rhythm again. But he found it throughout the course of the game, really stepped up in there, did a great job, just plays with so much energy, so much passion. Um He's, he's a force, and uh, the more he plays, the better he's going to get. Really excited about the way he played today and what he brings to this football team. The crowd seemed in that fourth quarter to come alive, and I, I thought it made a difference. It kind of gave your, your defense as well as your offense a lift. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you get that, that noise level is just different, you know, when they're into it. And, you know, certainly at that time, there was, there was plenty of reason to get into it, right? We needed stops. We needed a score, and they did, and – you know, certainly we uh, we created momentum. They helped create momentum and it helped us seal the football game. So we just got to do it on a more consistent basis. You have a chance to see your team play their first game now. Um, what do you know now about your team having played somebody other than yourself that you didn't know before this ball? Game? Well, I do know this is that they're into it. You know, they prepared hard. They prepared what we felt. We all felt we prepared well. Um, we didn't execute and we didn't have the discipline that we've shown consistently in practice. Uh, and I don't think it's a matter of want to or what now. We just got to do a better job coaching and playing it. But there is resiliency. There is grit. Guys kept playing. Guys kept going. They care about each other. They want to be really good. And they know that the only, the only way to get better is to pour yourself into it. You don't naturally get better because you play a game the following week. You get better because you work at the things that you lacked. And, uh, again, I don't want to uh, – I want to credit the other team. I want to credit Fresno State for playing, and they played. They played well, and they have the good football team. And uh, we got a good football team too. We got to keep getting better. Final question for me, I guess a comment maybe. Anthony Brown, fifteen to twenty-four, one hundred seventy-two yards, touchdowns. Uh, he he seemed to manage your offense pretty well, and he was under pressure quite a bit. He was under pressure a couple times. You know, got to look at a couple things. We did have a, you know, um, some opportunities there, and he he made them happen. He made some big plays with his feet and with his arm. Big pass to Johnny. 
Uh, just got to get there and, and look at the film and see what the pocket looked like, you know, see what our rod structure looked like and see where we can improve uh, because we've been really good in practice and preparation. Uh, he's a really good football player and, um, you know, we expect to get better and we will. Well, everybody else has been looking ahead to Ohio State. Now you can uh, actually sit back with your team and say, let's get ready for that next ball game, Ohio State next weekend. Congratulations on the win here today. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we'll let the rest of media jump in and uh, fire some questions at you as well. All right, let's open it up to questions from others. Uh, AJ McCord from Coin. Hey, Coach. First and foremost, what can you share about Kayvon Thibodeau and what you know at this point? We got rolled up on. I just uh, beyond that, I know it's a sprain, um, which we're very optimistic that it's nothing too serious. But uh, and as far as we know, X-rays are negative, so we'll assess a little bit later and get that information to you guys as soon as we can. Eric Copel, two four seven Sports. Coach, walk me through your vantage point on Anthony's run. It's a big play, fourth down, game on the line. Good to see him come through. But kind of was that the call, and was that what you wanted to see him do? Well, it's part of it on that call, certainly. You know, he is uh, he reads his keys, and you know he pitches it if it's there. If not, he keeps it. He did just that, and uh, made a great move, put his foot in the ground, crossed the field, and went and scored. So he he made the play better. Uh, the play was designed to get a big chunk, first down, first and foremost. But then after that, he made the rest of it happen. So. I think uh, that's where his experience comes into play. He has seen those situations before. He's been in big ball games and in big stadiums. Uh, he's did, he did a lot of really good things today. He did a lot of really good things, and we got to continue to construct and create this thing and present ourselves with the supporting cast around him to keep growing this offense. You know, we had moments there on offense, and others. You know, you you know what you'd like to have back. Um, and we know that we could be a really good offense, but we have to we have to coach for much better execution, attention to detail, and discipline to make that a reality. You know, it uh, you got to work it into reality. It just doesn't happen. James Kripia, the Oregonian. Mario, KT's absence. Adrian had to step in quite a bit. Braden Swinson, obviously, was going to play quite a bit regardless. But how did you feel? Both of them played. You talked in camp about Adrian having to be an every down player. He was forced to do so very quickly. Yeah, it looked like, you know, for the most part, we did get some pressure on them. They had the, they got the ball out quick. I know they were 30 or 40, uh, the 43, if I'm not mistaken. So the ball was out quick a few times. But on some of our, you know, man side rushes and on some of our stunts and games, looks like we got home, at least created some pressure and forced some balls to come out early. I thought that we set the edge pretty well, except for that one play in the second quarter where the ball rounded us, uh, second or third quarter, pardon me. Um, but aside from that, I thought there was really there was really bright spots there in the way that they played. I know that they played hard just watching them, the intensity they played with, the way they were finishing to the ball carrier, the way they were closing on quarterbacks, balls that were being swung out to the perimeter. They chased them down and they retraced really well um, when the ball was thrown downfield. So all in all, I think they played a good game. I'm going to have to watch the film to see how they graded out. But those guys are good football players that have to keep developing and maturing for us to be a good football team. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. And Mario, he had some offensive plays that were pretty impressive and then some inconsistency on, on offense as well. Just what do you assess or attribute to the up and down flow of the offense today? You know, it's hard to put your finger on it because uh, the energy was real good. The preparation was real good. Uh, we thought our physicality in pregame was well also. I know they have some good players. Uh, they did what we thought they would do. We did what we thought we would do. And there were times we were – a hat placement was off, hand position was off, leverage was off. Maybe a read wasn't, you know, read correctly. Um, there's enough in the execution where there's some big plays to be had and we didn't make them happen at times and other times we did. So um, I don't think it's a matter of scheme or uh, or effort or want to. We got to you got to keep grinding at executing and the details that go with executing at a high level, especially when a team does what they do. They play quarters. It sometimes turns into man. They play some post safety stuff. Uh, you're going to see different things, some cloud coverage that your quarterback's going to have to make some decisions on. Um, and they're going to cover you differently. You're going to see different cover patterns. And with that comes, again, precision and discipline. And so we just got to keep working. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Coach Triquez Bridges had that big stop at the, the end of the game there. With him and Dante getting their first, uh, you know, decent playing time, how do you feel they performed today? They had good moments. I know they competed, and that's what we wanted from them. We wanted to make sure both those guys went out there and just gave us everything they had. 
I know they like to have some plays back. You know, sometimes they were supposed to be pressed up there. They create a cushion, balls chucked out there on a hitch or, or a comeback, and, you know, you want those plays back. But um, it comes sometimes with playing for the first time in an extended role during a relevant time, you know, in a game like this. And, and they have a good passing game. They do. The quarterback's a good player. The receivers are good players. So if you're not precise, you know, they're going to get you. But Triquez stepped up. He made some really good plays. He's a conscientious guy. Dante Manning, same thing. Played with a lot of energy. I like the way that they involve themselves in the run game, too, now. You know, those boundary runs, they did a really good job, you know, because they went right at them trying to get the ball wide. And they stepped up in there and threw their, themselves in there and made some good stops. So all in all, proud of them and looking forward to them continuing to improve and get better. Ashley Conklin, register guard. Mario, what's the status of Mikhail Wright? Mikhail? Yeah. Mikhail's good. Jesus, uh, Jesus Cano, Fresno State uh, Collegian. Uh, hey, Coach, I know you mentioned earlier that you said that, you know, Fresno State was a great team. You guys had them against the wall, you know, with those back-to-back -back turnovers. What was the biggest that you, difference that you've seen after from the team, from Fresno State after that? Well, I think, uh, number one, they were a very well-coached team, and they have talent, um, a lot of respect for them. I think the second thing is, you know, college football is a game of momentum. You're up 14 nothing, and uh, you have a chance to really create a lot of momentum and create a really difficult situation. But you don't get the ball back, or you give the ball back, and all of a sudden there's a field goal, and then there's more, um, and all of a sudden momentum has swung, and credit to them for doing that. So I think they did this, you know, a lot of their mesh stuff, their crossing routes, um, some of their patterns, we didn't match as well as we thought that we could or would. Uh, and they did it both to the field and to the boundary. So they have some really good route concepts. I thought the receivers did a really nice job of finding some soft, some soft spots in the coverage and settling it down. And their quarterback is accurate, man. He got the ball out. He took a lot of shots now. I know we had four sacks, but we got to the quarterback, you know, hopefully a dozen times or so. But a gutsy player, always had a lot of respect for him. And I believe in that. In football, you respect the game of football by giving credit where credit is due. And, and credit to them for playing hard and playing well. They've got a good football team and a uh, good football game. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. You guys forced a lot of turnovers today. All, you know, I think the three that were recovered came off of a former five-star recruit making plays, uh, Justin, Noah, and Kayvon. Just talk about the way those guys got around the ball today and just the, I think, speed and athleticism in general from your defense. Yeah, you know, that sack fumble, you see, um, you, know, you watch it on tape, that's what you're looking for when you recruit a player, a guy that can explode like that because you change things, right? A, try, a guy tries to gap hinge or tries to set him, but the set doesn't get there. The set line is cut off, you blow by him, and all of a sudden you hit the quarterback, balls on the ground. Um, same thing with, with Justin. They just, they move at a different speed. So people have to adjust differently, and all of a sudden the collisions are that much greater, right? All of a sudden the opportunity to dislodge a ball um, to close in a situation and get someone on the ground that may have broken for a first down or a touchdown. Those things are a reality with uh, with athletes of that caliber. So uh, those certainly are two guys, you know, them, Noah, a lot of guys on defense that uh, are starting to, you know, play at a high level. And we just got to keep elevating the way that we play. Israel LaRue, Duck TV Sports. Coach, Mikhail Wright, he made some big plays on special teams and defense. What kind of energy does he bring to the team for you guys? What kind of what? I'm sorry. What kind of energy does he bring to that team for you guys? But Mikel has done an awesome job of coaching young guys. Mikel has been here now. This is his third year in the program. I'll be last year being kind of a half a year, but he's seen a lot of football and he's dynamic. The guy, uh, you know, I thought he was a quiet guy. He's on the leadership council now. He does a phenomenal job addressing the leadership council and talking to other guys. And you'll see him during practice all the time, pulling guys aside and talking technique, talking eye discipline, trying to teach guys how to do things better and how to enhance a culture. So um, Mikel, he brings a lot to the table. He brings a lot to the table because he's not only returning footballs and covering and playing defense. Uh, he also plays special teams. and he's, he's a hold up guy on the punt team. Right. He covers. Uh, I'm not sorry. On the punt return team, he's a, he's a cover guy. He's a, one of the wings on the uh, punt team as well. So uh, we just got to make sure that a guy like that, he's getting in the vicinity of 80 plays a game, maybe even more, that we always got to make sure that during the course of the week that he continues to take care of his body so he can be ready to go on Saturdays. Time for two more. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Mario, it looked like the injury to Drew was more significant, uh, both in the way he pulled up and he was on crutches, obviously, the rest of the way. 
yeah. any initial diagnosis on him and just the impact that that has at inside line where Justin and Noah, I believe, played every snap thereafter? Well, I didn't, they played a bunch too today and uh, Keith Brown was nicked up. Guys I missed today, I'm sure you saw that, or that we held back and we were very limited were guys like that, guys like Troy. Um, but in, uh, to your point about Drew, Drew was um, – Drew, Drew looks like he may have hurt himself a little bit more significant than uh, than KT. And we'll wait and see. You know, we'll wait and see till I get with the doctors. I've spoke with them briefly. Uh, we just got to get him examined, get a picture of that thing and see what it looks like. And hopefully – I don't think it's, you know, the real, real bad side. But I think, you know, he, he may have hurt a pretty good. We'll see. Last question, Tyson Alger, the I-5 quarter. Hey, Mario, what, what stands out to you the most about just everything that Cam McCormick went through from the injuries to getting back and being on the field today for you guys? Well, it's two years worth, you know, so imagine that. Imagine for two years just not knowing and feeling like you're getting there and all of a sudden you don't feel very good and then having to start over with a process and a procedure and then hoping and praying that it does come through and then slowly through rehab, good days, not so good days, progress, and maybe going backwards a little bit. Then finally having a breakthrough in camp and saying, okay, we can, we can go a little bit more and then getting first live rep. That's a big step right there to actually getting on the field. Um, hats off to him. He's a tremendous competitor. I mean, nothing but, you know, admiration, love and respect for him. And everybody does because that's, I don't know how many people would actually be able to stick with it like he has. So credit to him. I know he's happy for his teammates. He's happy for himself getting back out there. So looking forward to getting him and cranked up and prepared for this next week. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate the time. Congrats on the win. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good day, guys.